Hi, my name is Dennis Bell, and I will be answering Miranda's question from Chapter 11. Um, her question focused on the differences between famine and plagues on economic leveling, and her question was, in addition to a lower mortality rate, what are some of the reasons why famine had less of an impact on economic leveling? So in her summary, she, she definitely states the main reason um, why famines um, have less of an economic leveling impact, um, and that's strictly because um, they historically have tended to be less lethal um, and ca have a less high mortality rate um, than plagues or um, pandemics overall. Um, so when you transition, like when you talk about that at, in terms of actual impact on economics, you'll see that plagues and pandemics usually, because of the increased um, amount of death, you have a increased stress on labor force. Um, there's more of an incentive for um, labor to be paid more um, as workers are in higher demand. Um, so you will see economic gains strictly through that itself. Um, wages going up because um, employers need more workers and there is um, more scarcity among workers during those time periods. Um, if famines were to produce the same level of mortality as pandemics historically, um, then we probably would see some similar signs of um, wage increasing, wage increases um, to that same level, and then we might not see such a disparity between the two. Um, famines also historically um, tend to not go on as long, so again, you have less of an impact on the system, less shock to the system overall. Um, I would say that famines also will have more of an impact on lower class people than um, rich people overall. Um, there's definitely historical points where that is not true, but um, in terms of all of history, um, we see that during pandemics and other things, um, there, that is more of a it will affect everyone type of thing. Um, famines, at least to some degree, while everyone is affected, the rich and more wealthy individuals can afford at least to some for some time period to be shielded from the effects of those things so again you're seeing probably through famines you're seeing more of an impact on lower class people um than on than would be proportional to um pandemics where the, the higher class people might be affected as well um so that means just because mortality rate, even if it was equal, is probably going to affect lower classes more, which would not produce the same leveling effect economically um, at, it, as if during a pandemic um, and a higher class people had died and then their resources and um, their product was distributed um, to other people. And so that same leveling effect just isn't there. Um, I think that's pretty much it. There, there are other things, obviously, but um, I think the main things, as Miranda stated in her summary, just pandemics kill more people historically. Um, they go on longer, and um, I think, at least in my opinion, I think they affect a wider range of people, which can have more of a leveling effect because it's not concentrated among a certain class level. Um, so I think that's basically answers her question. I just think that um, famines definitely still have impacts on um, economics but and inequality overall. Um, they just are less of a shock to the system, less of a force to be reckoned with, um, and they do t are more targeted than other things like world wars or pandemics or any other type of plague or anything like that. Um, so I thought it was a great question. Um, I think it's definitely interesting to compare um, different types of leveling forces historically, um, and especially between ones like famines and pandemics where you would not necessarily think of them as man-made things where we are fighting wars and it's just destroying capital and it's destroying resources and then that is producing leveling, but when it's just more of a natural thing um, and we can see that pandemics and plagues tend to be more of a forced to resetting um, equality um, across historical terms. All right, thank you.